Hey, you clicked on this video, which means you want to hear a random guy's opinion on the naked and famous Fall Winter 2023 drops. Like the Spring Summer 2023 list, I'll only rank the jeans based on how interesting I think the fabrics are. Okay, first up, the Army HBT Olive Trap. For those who don't know, HBT stands for Herringbone Twill, which is basically twill, but zigzag. This fabric is obviously inspired by the 1940s US Army HBTs, but it's kind of an uninspired pick if you ask me. I mean, it's pretty much a repro fabric, but on the other hand, it's unconventional on jeans which makes it kind of unique in that sense. As someone who's into vintage military, garments with a military twist like this are always welcome, so it's a yeah for me. Next, the all black comfort stretch. I don't really care much for stretch, but more power if you do. Anyway, not sure why so many brands do this, but denims with black warps and black wefts always seem to hide all the texture the denim has to offer. Maybe I'm missing something, but they never look right to me. It makes the jeans look flat and sterile, and of course with time the fades will add some character, but I'd rather a black warp and white weft denim any day. Hard pass. Next, the Camo Slub Selvage. It's a nice coloured alternative to your typical slubby jeans, but there's otherwise nothing much else to it. Doesn't look like it has much fading potential to, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. Overall, it's a meh for me. Next, the Elephant 12. Coming in at 20 ounces and woven in a broken tool construction with slubby yarns. At least in the raw denim scene, the Elephant series is truly a one of a kind, and I consider it to be a naked and famous classic. It'll definitely develop some sick fits, but from an Elephant series point of view, it's hardly any different from its predecessors. Still, it's it's always nice to see it in the collection, so it's a year for me. Next, the gradient denim in indigo green. Probably one of the more novel jeans this season. It's dark indigo at the top but gradually turns to dark green at the hem. And if you flip them inside out, it's the opposite. Dark green at the top and dark indigo at the hem. This effect is achieved with a jacquard loop, which is typically used to weave intricate patterns. So it's pretty cool to see that subtle fabrics like these can also be woven. Not sure how fits will develop on this, but on paper, it's definitely a cool jean. Speaking of green, the green cast slab salvage. If you don't already know, most indigo denims are red cast, meaning they are only dyed with indigo which gives a uniform shade and a reddish purplish tint. Meanwhile, green cast has an extra layer of green sulfur which gives the denim a greenish tint. None is better than the other, it just depends on the look you are going for. Compared to other green cast jeans by other brands, this one by Nick and the Famous doesn't really stand out, so it's a meh for me. Next, the herringbone denim. It's pretty much the indigo version of the army HBTs and while some heritage and menswear brands occasionally offer herringbone twill on their feet pants, chinos or cargo pants, it's actually rarely found on jeans. So props to Naked and Famous. This goes right here. Next, the King of Slab 2. Coming in at 23 ounces, it's the heaviest fabric this season but none of that matters because it's the super slubby and streaky textures that truly make this the embodiment of the Naked and Famous brand of taking things to the extreme. The beige wears also add a nice touch and I really wish I could wear this in the tropics but I'll probably die of a heat stroke. To all the denim hits in Southeast Asia planning to rock this, you have my respect. Definitely a cool pair of jeans. Next, the kimono print salvage. There's a kimono print inside, so if you like to show off your calves, then more power to you. But neither the kimono print nor the denim is particularly interesting to me, so it's a meh. Next, the pagoda dyed salvage. It's your typical denim on the outside, but inside, the wares are dyed with a pagoda tree dye, which makes them golden. Natural dyes like these always add so much character to the fabric, and these jeans are no different. The yellow threads are also a nice complement to the wares. As someone who's a sucker for nature-derived dyes, the pagoda dyed salvage definitely goes into the cool tier. Next, we have the Sea Island Cotton Salvage. Not sure how they'll fade, but that won't matter much because it's all about that Sea Island Cotton. For those who don't know, Sea Island Cotton is an extra long staple cotton that's one of the rarest and softest cotton available, even more so than Supima or Egyptian cotton. The long fibers give it a silky touch as well as greater durability. Truly a luxury jean in my book. As a tailoring and classic menswear enthusiast, this one's probably my favourite from this season. Snack for sure. Next, the Slap Stretch Salvage. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like Naked and Famous always releases a Slap Stretch denim every season. It's a solid choice if you want that slimy texture with minimal break-in period, especially those new to raw denim, but at this stage of my hobby, it doesn't do anything for me. It's a meh. Lastly, we have the Sumi Ink Coated Salvage. Now these are the kind of jeans I can get behind. The Sumi Ink is a very dark black, and you'll often see it used in Chinese and Japanese calligraphy and paintings. There's also an indigo layer below the Sumi ink, so I'm excited to see how this uniquely black and indigo denim will fade compared to other typical black and indigo denims. Thankfully, the webs are white because the world does not need another black warp black webs denim. Definitely a snack. And that's all for now. Like if you agree, dislike if you don't, but also let me know in the comments why. And if you're done with all that, here's more denim content. Until next time, stay subtle.